Wednesday Night Reviews. All right. Thank you for tuning in, everyone. I'm your host, Conrad, from Wednesday Night Reviews. And from superheroes to average Joes, here's what I read this week. So I got my hands on a copy of Mr. Miracle by Tom King and Mitch Garads, uh, and it is a fabulous book. Uh, as you can see, it's already won two Eisners for Best Writer and Best Artist, uh, and it's honestly no surprise why. This book is fabulous. Um, at the same time, I must say, it is the least superhero, superhero book I've read yet, uh, and I think that's marvelous. So for those of you who have never read anything about Mr. Miracle, have never touched the DC Universe, whatever your familiarity is with it, this titular character, Mr. Miracle, his human name, I'll say his normal name, uh, is Scott Free. He's actually not even human. He's a god born on uh, New Genesis and then raised by uh, a, a character called Darkseid, who is like the ultimate evil character in the DC Universe. Uh... As a, important to note, Darkseid also reigns over a world called Apocalypse, uh, in which it's basically hell. He trains warriors and parademons, and he wants to kill everything. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. And that more or less serves as this guy's dad. So Scott Free is a, a really interesting character because he shouldn't be who he is. He should be a mass murdering general of an army of hell and conquer planets. But instead as a kid, he grew up and he did not want to be on apocalypse. He did not like the people he was around. So he tried to escape and for years and years he failed. And when he did, he got beat, he got scarred, he got well, everything. He's in hell. Like, come on. But as he endured, as he, fought his way and resisted hell for all those years, he learned how to escape. And finally, he finds his way through what's called a boom tube. It's basically a, a teleportation warp hole. He comes to Earth, and he takes on the moniker of Mr. Miracle. And as a job, he basically is an escape artist. He's Houdini of our time. And what makes this book so fun is, this is a number of years afterward, and the main conflict in the book is simply Apocalypse and New Genesis, the planet of gods, are at war. And New Genesis needs Scott to fight as a general and lead troops into battle to stop Apocalypse from, well, destroying everything. At the same time, Scott's wife, Big Barda, also grew up on Apocalypse. And she was being groomed to be one of Granny Goodness's Furies. So the Furies are four female warriors who are extraordinary. These women are the best at what they do. They, they kill, they conquer, no matter if it's one person they're fighting or an army. They find a way through skill, through cunning, through sheer ability or power. It doesn't matter. If you run into one of the Furies, you're done. If you run into all four, your whole planet's done. And that's what Big Barda was raised as. And she's a gigantic person. She's like, I think she's something like seven feet tall. She's like crazy huge. And her and Scott manage to come to Earth and, and they start a life. And yes, they have adventures with the Justice League and, and crime fighting. But what makes this book amazing, what makes Mr. Miracle fabulous and and by and far above and beyond these awards and, and that's why they've got them and I'm sure they'll get more is how human these characters become under Tom King's control so as I mentioned Scott gets called in to fight a war and Big Barda goes with him because why wouldn't she and they lead troops in a battle and throughout the book we see this conflict and we see them negotiating with Darkseid's henchmen and his son and trying to come to some sort of truce you know between hell and, and god or heaven if you will or new genesis as it's called but what makes this whole thing worthwhile is how human it is so between these crazy interplanetary scenes we have scott and barda doing the most mundane and, and frankly boring stuff that you or i do they drive through traffic, they go see a movie, um, go to a restaurant, all of this stuff. But that so quickly 
for so many awesome reasons, becomes the most interesting part of the whole book. We get to see these characters develop as a family. So at the beginning of the book, they're talking about responsibilities and stress and not seeing each other because of their shifts at this war. Um, and then they start talking about what they want to do with their apartment and dealing with people and, and all this stuff and starting a family. And I think some of the most beautiful scenes in this book are when they figure out, hey, we're going to be parents. Because there's this moment of panic that is induced in both of these characters that they don't know what to do. And it, amazingly, mind you, these are characters who lead whole armies into battle. They negotiate peace treaties between planets. And yet the idea of having a family is terrifying. And they don't know what to do. They can't punch their way through a problem. They can't kill their problem. Nothing. It's simply a matter of, well, what do you do? What When life happens, what do you do? And for that reason alone, Tom King makes these characters the most human characters I've ever read on a superhero book. And in order to have that come through as best as possible, Mitch Garrods does this fabulous job of illustrating everything. And he uses such a weird style. He combines all of these different elements from all of these different decades or eras of comic art to give you this consistent beautiful looking book that is guaranteed to be timeless so Mitch Gerard's style in this book is I don't want to say dirty but well here so this is a scene where a parademon is eating someone and then we have other scenes where Scott is in bed after having gotten slugged in the face uh, and I believe he's broken his arm so the style is, is I mean it's, don't get me wrong it's gorgeous but there's something about it that feels rough and un imperfect it doesn't have these gorgeous, perfect lines of drawing. The coloring isn't like saturated. The the outlines of the faces and the arms uh, and any definition where there's a background behind it is black. So it has this rough texture and appeal to it. And the colors used are greatly simplistic. There, there's never like five shades of of peach to show shadowing in the body you'll get peach or white or whatever you want to call it and then wherever there's necessary shading you'll get lines uh, in order to show that and that's for everything that's for monsters for demons for a costume anything like that the color is done simplistically the art style itself the drawings are complex like the textures of a beard for instance look fantastic and real and then other things are added in, like how they show detailing in the background or in certain parts of clothing. So Garaz chooses to show the interior of Mr. Miracle's uh, collar of his cape, which is the part that stands up here, this big, broad green thing. If you look closely, the interior of it is shown just like a... Uh, a 1940s or 50s comic print does. And the, the, there's instances of the background being like that as well. And because of this fusion of all these different styles, it makes for a really beautiful book that you can't peg when it's from. I mean, obviously, yes, you can read the jacket, but stylistically, you know it's not old because it's too detailed and, and interesting to look at to be like from the 50s or 40s or 30s. But it has all these elements that are totally unnecessary in modern comics, which makes it timeless. So for anyone out there reading comics for the first time, if you have not yet picked this up, no matter if you're a DC fan, a hater, if you're into the big two or the big you know, other comic companies, or if you only swear on indie books, check this book out because of how human it is. 
So again, Tom King and Mitch Garrods come together to create this beautiful work of fiction. I, I can't call it comics. It's it's definitely art. It's, yes, a comic book, but it, it feels elevated among the comic medium. It is an important book. And for that reason, guys, check it out. Again, that's Mr. Miracle. Uh, you'll find it at your local comic book stores. If they don't have it in this iteration, they might have a hard copy. Uh, if they don't, for some reason, they can order it, and it'll be there probably within a week or two. If that doesn't work for you, check out your local bookstores, things like Chapters, Barnes & Noble, BMV here in Toronto is fantastic. Beyond that, if you're into digital copies, check out Comixology, go straight through DC, uh, or there are other ways to get books. But please do make sure you're supporting the writers, the artists, and everyone involved. So guys, thanks for tuning in. Hit that like button, subscribe for more, and let me know what you thought of Mr. Miracle, and what are you reading this week? Have a good one, guys.